In this video tutorial, we'll show you how to properly use the RTX 1250 saw. Anyone planning to dig, excavate, or otherwise move earth deeper than 16 inches is required by Texas law to call 811 before beginning a project to have underground utilities marked. Rocky Hill Equipment recommends calling 811 prior to any project that involves digging with our equipment regardless of depth. To begin, this is a demonstration of a properly operated RTX 1250. This machine is designed to always drive forward while cutting and never backward. The backfill blade is at the front of the machine and the circular cutting blade is at the rear. On the circular blade, there are different components that serve their own purpose. You have segments, segment bolts, pockets, and rock bits. Rock bits are what contact the rock material, break it into smaller pieces, thus making your trench. Let's go through operator control layout. Once you take a seat, you'll notice the control handles to your right hand side. The backfill blade is controlled with this, a black handle. This allows the backfill blade to lift, drop, turn left to right, And by pressing this button on the back of the handle, you can change the angles of the blade if needed. Keep in mind the backfill blade needs to be lifted all the way before transporting or trenching. Now focusing to your right side, you'll locate the green handle. This handle will allow the circular saw to be lifted and dropped. The gray handle controls rear steering. This will allow you to maneuver the machine in tight spots when adjusting or moving around objects. Do not make turns while trenching. The knobs to the left of the backfill blade handle, you'll notice they are labeled with the letter R for reverse, the letter N for neutral, and the letter F for forward. Both knobs have to be in neutral in order for the machine to start. Moving over to the dashboard, you'll see the screen displaying the RPM gauge, fuel gauge, and oil PSI. Top right hand corner of the dashboard, you have a button, speedometer image, that allows you to switch screens to show you the hour meter, fuel gauge, battery voltage, temperature gauge, and hydraulic gauge. The opposite side of the screen, we have the high gear and low gear button. When transporting the machine, you can use the high gear option. While trenching, you want the rock saw in low gear. In the center console, you have individual indicators showing you what controls are on, off, neutral, and all fluid components. To the left of the steering wheel, you'll see the RPM throttle and the safety horn. By your right foot, there is a toe-to-heel pedal. This pedal will allow you to move, adjust the machine forward and reverse. This pedal is to be used during transportation and adjusting only. Look to make sure all my handles, controls are in neutral and start the machine. Turn the circular saw knob to the right so you have reached 100% wheel speed. Next, you want to throttle the machine to full capacity, approximately 2,610 RPMs. Once we have those steps completed, we'll start to lower our cutting blade slowly until we hit ground. Once you get the depth desired, the next step will be to turn the creeper knob forward slightly. You'll notice the speed of the creeper and percentage appear on your screen. At this point, you'll feel the machine advance slowly. Set the creeper speed depending on the material you are cutting through. There will be four triangle shapes visible on the RPM bar image. Try to keep the RPM speed between these shapes. If the RPM drops below, that's a clear indication that your creeper is set too high for the material you are trenching. While using this machine, we suggest picking up the saw wheel every five feet for the first 20 feet and have a spotter get good visual on the rock pits, pockets, and segments. After your first 20 feet, you can pick up the saw blade every 10 or 15 feet, depending on how comfortable you feel with the material you are cutting through. The purpose of this is to prevent major damages from occurring. When too many rock bits go missing, you start to damage or break pockets. When finished digging, again, 
put the creeper in neutral. Lift the blade. Slow the throttle and put the cutting blade into neutral. Engage the parking brake and turn off the machine. When you are finished installing your components into your trench, the RTX 1250 also backfill the material to complete the job. This is done with the backfill blade at the front of the machine and use the foot pedal to advance the machine to the desired location. Position the blade close to final grade level and at a 45 degree angle facing the blade to the trench. This will force the tailings back into the trench as you creep forward. This machine is not to bulldozer. Only push as much of the tailings as you safely can in as many passes as it takes to fill your trench. Let's talk about safety. Always wear the safety seat belt as being thrown from the machine in the event of an accident could cause more severe injury than being locked in place under the roll cage. Be aware of the terrain, obstacles, overhead hazards, and other workers near your trenching path. Do not lose focus as trenching can be slow and monotonous, but accidents can happen at any time. Always learn as much as you can about the equipment you've rented and its proper operation to complete your job. If you'll be renting equipment for multiple days, please remove the keys from the equipment and store in a safe location on your job site. Please return the equipment in the condition it was rented to you, clean and full of fuel. If you have any concerns or issues with the equipment, please give us a call at 210-651-5611 and let us solve those issues for you. Because at Rocky Hill Equipment Rental, we are committed to service.